now it's on that track wire, right? right? So it's on the loop, so it's following it out. And then if you guys want to move back a little bit, you can kind of see where it's been. Yeah. It's going to get into this area and follow the path. Because he has the blades turned off through the, the station loop and the transition zone. Yeah. So you can see, here's the transition zone, and it doesn't follow the same path out every time. It's going to vary its path up to about five, five meters or so, which is roughly 50 feet. But you can hear it now. There's nothing going right now. So the blades are off, and once it gets up into this corner, it doesn't care about these little sticks. It does. It'll, it'll pick them up from time to time and get stuck. And then it'll walk. And then I think they will have to stick go back and it'll just skip this little area that it was going to cut. Takes X number of attempts to try to it's gonna keep trying. Where I bumped it, it's going to skip that area. It just gave up on Remember you were there. Yeah, because it knows something something was there and it's, it's going to skip it. I'll let you guys take pictures of it. I'll flip it. And these are, this is what's doing the cutting right here. And we're replacing that once a month or so? So on cool season grass, you're going to get probably about three weeds out of it in the past, and they've done quite well because they're lighter weight. So you're able to get out on some of the growing stuff. Now, it's going to go through some sand, and you're probably going to be replacing blades a little bit sooner than you would normally because it'll wear on it, but it, it definitely can handle that. As long as the soil is stable, if it's, not, if it's loose sand yeah. and it goes in, it's mm -hmm. going to get stuck. Um, but as long as it's stable enough to, to walk on, the robot should be able to handle it. Right now, this is overkill. This is two acres, yeah. and this is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We don't need it to run it. We can probably do this in probably six to, to four hours of runtime a day. Uh, we're not. We're running it a lot more because we want to get data off yep. of it and we're testing things on it. But, but the more area you add to it, the more complex the field is, then you kind of shrink that window of what it can do. Because if it's got, if you watch it turn, it turns really slow. So you lose a lot of time in, in turning. So you want to make it like nice long strips so it can pick up a lot more production. Um, all that taken into account shrinks it. So like if it was a perfect rectangle and it could run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our big product could mow up to 18 acres. But it's that's not that's not reality. Reality is closer to 12 acres yeah. because you're inevitably going to want to use the, the space for something and you're not going to want to run the robot at the same time. You might deploy two of these on the, exactly. on the 20 acre property. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the lifespan? How long are we thinking this guy, how many seasons are we getting out of him? So seasons for the unit themselves, we've got, we've got original ones running that have been in the market for 10 to 12 years. Um, the durability, as long as you maintain it and keep it clean, you're going to run through some components. Battery life is about five years on okay. it. So you're going to be replacing a battery about once every five years. Battery is about, uh, it's about $2,500. Right. The hilt for a number of years. It's just now starting to enter into the growth, growth phase here in the United States and Canada. Um, and you're going to find that a lot of a lot of what you want out of it, we're going to try to provide. So the travel path that Kurt showed you about, that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a direct correlation to what you're talking about. You know, if, I, if I'm at a park and I, and I I need to mow a soccer field and a baseball field, but I need it to go all the way over here and get something else, I need to be able to safely get it to that point. Right. I need to be able to map it, create a travel path, put a safety zone around it, and then turn the blades on and off when I need that to happen. So a lot of that stuff is, we get that from you guys. Let's say, go back to work, just tell them to the check mark. Check mark. Check mark. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to get your countdown. It says ignore temperature. Yeah, it looks like it's too cold, so it's ignore temperature. So hit yeah. check mark. Yeah, hit yeah. check mark. Then it should give you a countdown, and then once the countdown, you just gently lower the lid. Oops, sorry. 